स्टूडेंट स्कॉलर्स इन एसोसिएशन विद गोवा हेडमास्टर्स एसोसिएशन I hope uh, you were clear with the yesterday's class if you not then I would recommend that you watch the previous video so that you get a better understanding of what we are going to learn today today we are going to study a little in depth about trigonometry with regards to specific angles okay now you remember that yesterday when we were discussing uh, we spoke about the trigonometric function and the related angle to it right but what we would do is we would just write it as sin a or cos b cot c and so on but that c was some angle were we giving the value for that angle no but in today's class or rather in your 10th standard curriculum you need to know certain values which are related to a trigonometric function and the specific angle so here i have a table which is empty right now but i want to fill in information in that so we are going to deal with angles like 0 degrees 30 degrees 45 degrees 60 degrees and 90 degrees so we are going to find out values okay for the trigonometric function of these angles only now can it be like i can have 31 degree and i want to find out the value of that trigonometric function for that angle you can you if you use a scientific calculator then you can find out but in your class of 10th standard you just have to worry about 0 30 45 60 90 90 that's it okay now so no one is going to ask you this entire table you know to answer write on a answer paper but you are going to solve problems based on that so we are going to spend a little bit of time in understanding how these values can be found out first of all you need to learn you know to draw these two triangles they are different one is slightly smaller than the other okay then we are going to write 45 and 45 in both these places okay please learn how i'm you know going about with that because if you follow the same steps you will not make mistakes so 45 and 45 then what we are going to do is write 60 for the other triangle and base angle is 30 wherever the angles are 45 exactly opposite to those angles all we are going to do is write 1 okay and hypotenuse we are going to write 2 i hope this thing is clear two triangles 45 45 opposite to 45 is 1 and hypotenuse is 2 same way for the other triangle hypotenuse will write 2 the base angle was 30 so next to that the side that we is there will write 3 and the other side will write 1 okay i hope this is very clear once we are done with this the bigger numbers let's put a root sign so in the first triangle bigger number is 2 so i'll put a root sign for that and in the second case bigger number is 3 so i'll put a root sign for that as well okay so two triangles i hope you know how to write those values down then this is our favorite table what we have studied in the previous class so here sin is related to opposite and hypotenuse and so on right so if say for example i want to find out value of cos 30 because i've marked it in that orange color there so cos 30 first of all i need to know what does cos mean so cos is adjacent upon hypotenuse from where i'm looking at it i'm looking from angle 30 so look at that triangle where 30 is marked okay so cos 30 will be adjacent that is root 3 and hypotenuse which is 2 so my values 30 right so marked over there adjacent will be and the value becomes root 3 upon 2 do you think you have to literally study the table now no because if you know that part 
of knowing the entire table of sine, cos, tan, cot, sec, cosec, and the triangles exactly correctly, okay, exactly and correctly, uh, you will be able to do this table done. So let's try another one. So here we are finding cot 45. First of all, we have to locate where is angle 45 and what is cot. So cot is nothing but adjacent upon opposite. So let us take mark one 45 angle. Now you will say there are two 45 degree angles. Which one should I consider? You can consider any one of them. It will, it will not change the value. Okay. So cot 45 will be adjacent upon opposite. So from 45 when I look, adjacent is 1 and opposite is also 1. So 1 upon 1 will be 1. Okay, let's quickly try another one. Here I'm finding sine 60. Locate where is angle 60 first and sine is opposite upon hypotenuse. So from 60 when I look, opposite <coughs> is root 3 and hypotenuse is 2. So this would become root 3 upon 2. Next, let us try as cosec 30. So first find out where is 30 degree. Cosec is hypotenuse upon opposite. So hypotenuse is 2, opposite is 1, so value will become 2. Okay. Now, like this, you can find out all the other values. So you can try a few. I am finding for 10, 30. Can you look at the table and the triangle and think what could be the answer? First, locate the 30 degree angle. 10 is nothing but opposite upon adjacent so it would become 1030 I marked it for you 1 upon root 3 did you think of that as the answer good enough then you have already understood the entire method of going about with this let's try another one sec 60 okay and by the way it is sec okay s e c sec so here 45 it will be hypotenuse upon adjacent and that's how you get all the values. So I just quickly you know run through it and like this when you do one sec okay if you notice that you know in the first table you were able to get all the values I know I've just rushed through it quickly you can Take a screenshot right now and then, you know, check for yourself. But you are able to find out values for 30, 45, and 60. But 0 and 90 is difficult to calculate. So because of that, you will have to, you know, learn the next table. That is trigonometric table only for learning 0 and 90. It's simple. All you have to do is write sine, cos, tan, cos, sec, cosec, and... 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, ND, ND, 0, and ND, 1, 1, ND. Now, what is this ND represents is nothing but not defined. That means if you were to, you know, plot it on a graph, I'm going to teach you a simple dance step right now. Okay, so sine would be something like this. Okay, cos would be something like this. 10, cot. And it becomes, if you do it a little faster, then it becomes like, you know, a dance step. So, are you going to draw them? No, you are going to do them in your, if you are going to take math in your 11th standard, then you have these thing to draw on the graph paper. But basically, that is how it will go. This is what you have to remember. Now, I said 10 is like this. This means that, you know, it is not going to touch any of the axis anywhere and it goes straight up to a point infinity that is not defined. So we don't know. That's the reason we say ND are not defined over there. Please know these things, and if you completely understand, then you will be able to solve the next problem that we are going to see right away. So what kind of questions are asked? Questions are something like this. Evaluate 5 sine square 30 minus cos square 45 plus 10 square 60. It looks a little bit complicated, but 
trust me, I've taken the simplest problem first. Okay, all that we'll do is now we'll write brackets. Okay, so we have how many functions? Three, right? Sine is there, cos is there, tan is there. So three functions, so we'll write three brackets first. Okay, we'll write a little bigger bracket so it becomes easier to write the values. Then what we are going to look at is, we are they are separated by a sine, right? So sine square 30 is separated from cos square 45 with a negative sign. So let us put those signs over there. Then I will check for my trigonometric function, is there a square or a cube, whatever is the value, then I will write that also. So in this case, it is square, right? So I will write squares in all these places, wherever there is. Next, what I will do is, any number that is there multiplied with the trigonometric function, then I will write that also. So here it is 5. In the other two places, there is no number, right? So just leave it like that, OK? After you have done this, then we go to our usual table and the two triangles. Simple, right? So when you're solving, look at that question. Okay, how many functions are there? Those many, you will write brackets. Okay, two line brackets, big ones. Okay, then whichever sign is there, you know, plus, minus, I will put it, multiplication also can be there. Okay, I will write those. Then if it is raised to a square or a cube, I will write those outside the bracket. The numbers which are there multiplied with the trigonometric functions, I'll write those. And now we will write the values. So, in the first case, forget about that square for a while. It is sine 30. First of all, what is sine? Sine is nothing but opposite upon hypotenuse. From where are we looking at? We are looking from angle 30, right? So looking at angle 30, okay, it would become opposite from sine 30, right? So opposite is 1, hypotenuse is 2. So the value of sine 30 is 1 upon 2, and that it is sine square, and I've already written the square, so there is no problem now. Next is cos square 45. Keep square for a while, and then just find out the value of cos 45. Cos is nothing but adjacent upon hypotenuse, and we are looking from angle 45, so adjacent upon hypotenuse. When you do that, you will get 1 upon root 2. Square is already put, so no problem. Next, we have 10, 60. 10 is opposite upon adjacent. From which angle? 60. It will be root 3 upon 1. So, you know, in the previous part I was telling you, you don't need to actually study the entire table is because of this. If Imagine you are going to solve this problem, but you are spending another 10 minutes to write the entire table. How much time are you going to actually waste? So, time is money, and time is marks over here. So don't waste them, and simple, right? So I've written all those values. If you do this correctly, technically you should get half mark for each of these, but depends on how the marking scheme goes. It changes. So once we are done with this, we are going to, in the next step, we are going to write same those brackets once again. So let's do them again, okay? And what we are going to do is, write the signs, and we are going to square all whatever is there in the bracket. Wherever we have put a square, we'll square that value. So one square will become one, two square will become four. So the value that I will write in the first bracket will be one upon four. And I have you know, already calculated that square, right? So I don't write that square once again. This five is outside, so I've written it one upon four. In the second bracket, previous one it was one upon root two. So squaring that one square will become one upon root two square will become two because that root sign and the square sign will cancel off and what we'll get is two, so one upon two, okay? In the third bracket, it is root three upon one, the whole square, so root and the square cancel, so I'll get three and one square will become one, so three upon one. I hope this part is clear till here. If you follow the exact same procedure, trust me, not make mistakes. Then what we are going to do is, 
we are going to multiply the number, whatever is outside, multiply it only in the numerator because it is just 5, right? So if it is written in the numerator, multiply it only with the numerator. Okay, so it would become 5 multiplied by 1 will become 5 upon 4 minus, there's nothing to multiply in the second bracket, so 1 upon 2 written as it is plus nothing to multiply in the third bracket as well, so 3 upon 1. Now what we are going to do is, if you notice carefully, the denominators are all different. So I need to find out or I, rather I need to make the denominators same. And how I do it is by using the LCM method. So take all those denominators and write it separately in the rough column. And all these things you have already studied in your 8th standard, 9th standard and probably in this, even in the 7th standard. But Still, if you, if you can't remember, then check it out. Okay, so I will write all the numbers here. Then I will put a line like this. And then I think of a prime number, the smallest prime number. So we'll start with 2. Okay. Now, my idea is to make all those numbers 1, 1, 1, which are presently as 4, 2, 1. So taking 2, which is, which is my you know, own thought number, I will multiply and I see whether I can get 4 as the answer. So 2 times 2 is 4 and 2 times 1 is 2 and 1 is written as it is. So the numbers which are green, written in green, I'm just telling you that I have multiplied so that I can get the top number as the answer, so it is possible. And if at all is the same, 1 means it is the end of it, so just get that 1 down, that's it. Now, again think of another number which I can use to multiply and get 2 as my answer. So, it can start with 2, right? So, take 2 and 2 1 times is 2, 1 is already there, so just bring them down. Now, my whatever I thought of creating is done, right? So, the idea was to or change that 4, 2, 1 to 1, 1, 1, which is done already. So this part is clear. Once I have done that, whatever number that I have, you know, I was thinking of and used them there, those numbers need to be multiplied. So the ones which are in red especially. So 2 multiplied by 2 will become 4. Okay. So this 4 will become my new denominator. So I'll put one big upon sign and write 4. Okay, once I have done this, I will take all the fractions that I had got in the previous step, that is 5 upon 4, 1 upon 2 and 3 upon 1. Okay, I will write them in the rough column and multiply that number that I had just got, right? So 4 with all these fractions. So let's multiply. Now if you look over here, that 4 and 4 will get cancelled. What I will get is, you know, 5 in the first case. I have 1 upon 2 multiplied by 4. So 2 1s are 2, 2 2 is 4. So the next number that I can get is then 2 multiplied by 1 will become 2. In this case, 1 and 4 I can cancel. So 3 times 4 will give me 12. I hope this thing is clear because this is, in the entire problem of this kind, all you have, students mostly make mistakes either substituting the trigonometric value incorrectly or finding, you know, doing the, all this arithmetic incorrectly. So just learn this method and you'll be able to solve them, you know, like a pro. So this, here what happens, so 5 minus 2 plus 12, so 12 chocolates you have, I take 2 from there, so I'll get 10, and 10 plus, I give 5 more, so it'll become 15, and upon 4 is as it is, so it'll become 15 upon 4. So whatever the question was, that 5 sine square 30 minus cos square 45 plus 10 square 60, after solving, the answer that you will get is 15 upon 4. Okay, if you want to take a screenshot, you can and then write it down later. 
Let us solve another one. All right, so uh, 9 cos square 60 plus root 2 sine 45 minus cot square 30. So what was the first step? First step was just to write the brackets. Here I've written. Next step is to put the signs. Okay, wherever there is square or a cube, put that outside the bracket on top. So first one, there is a square. Second one, nothing. Third one, there's a square, so I'll put that. Okay, then I will write any number which is multiplied to that trigonometric function, we'll do that. Okay, and now we need our usual table and the two triangles. So what are we looking at? We are looking at cos 60, and from angle 60. So from angle 60, when I look, cos is nothing but adjacent upon hypotenuse. So adjacent will become 1, hypotenuse will become 2. So this would become 1 upon 2. Okay, then sine 45. So look at the first triangle, whichever 45 we want. So 45 will be sine is opposite upon hypotenuse. So from there, opposite is 1, hypotenuse is root 2. So the value that comes in there will become 1 upon root 2. Next one is cot 30. So cot 30 will become, cot is what? It is nothing but adjacent upon opposite. So when I'm looking from 30, adjacent is root 3 and opposite is 1. So it will become root 3 upon 1. Next step, all I have to do is square whatever is there. So when I do that, write the brackets, then write the signs and whatever is outside the bracket. So 1 square will become 1 upon 4. Okay. Here, there's no square, right? So I'll write 1 upon root 2 as it is. Next one, there's a square. So root 3 square will become 3 and upon 1 will remain as it is. Now what I have to do is, whatever is there outside the bracket, I will multiply. So 9 multiplied by 1 will become 9 upon 4. Root 2 multiplied by 1 will become root 2 upon root 2 and minus, or root 2 upon root 2, we can cancel it off and I'll write 1 upon 1. Now, another small thing to keep in mind over here is that sometimes when these numbers are, you know, statistically put over there, you tend to cancel them off and even, you know, not write that fraction. That's the time you'll make a small error of calculating. So don't do that. Write that fraction as it is. Okay, even if it is 1 upon 1. And then here it will become 3 upon 1. Now here, are my denominators same? No, they're different, right? So all I will do is write them, okay, in the rough column, 4, 1, and 1, and then put a lines like this. Think of a prime number, smallest prime number, start dividing, and I will get, think of 2, 2, 2 times is 4, and then rest as 1 as it is. Think of another number, and then I'm sure you're thinking of 2, right? So 2 once is 2, and rest all the numbers are same. Now, once I've changed whatever I had written there, 4, 1, 1, my idea was to convert them into 1, 1, 1, which are how many numbers you have. The idea is that. So once you have managed to do it, multiply the numbers that are outside. So the numbers that are in red, so 2 multiplied by 2 will become 4. Put a big upon sign, okay, and then write 4. Then what are we doing? We are writing all the fractions once again. 9 upon 4, 1 upon 1, 3 upon 1. And then what are we doing? Multiplying that new number, the denominator what we got, and multiply it with all the fractions. So doing that will become this. Once we have done this part, all I will do is cancel whatever I can. So 4 and 4 can, get, can be canceled off. And in the first fraction, I will get my answer to be 9. Second one, nothing can be cancelled. So 4 multiplied by 1 will become 4. Second one, 
3 multiplied by 4 will become 12. Okay. Now, once you are done with this, I have plus 9 minus 12 and so do all the 9 plus 4 will become 13, 13 minus 12 will become 1 upon 4. So when you solve that entire question 9 cos square 60 plus root 2 sine 45 minus cos square 30, substitute all the values, calculate your answer that comes is 1 upon 4. You can copy the question and practice it out and just to check the answer you can take a screenshot. Okay. Next. Let's go a little bit complicated one. I, I said complicated, not difficult. Okay. Uh, here you have a question written in numerator upon denominator. Nothing changes, same procedure. Here we are going to see how many fractions are there. Let's take in the numerator first. How many? Cos, sec and ten. So three brackets in the numerator and two brackets in the denominator. So let's do that. A big upon sign and this. Then we are going to check for that trigonometric function is square there. So in the first case, yes. Second case, yeah. Third case also there's a square. So we'll put those squares. Everywhere there's a square, right? So let's write that. Signs and numbers outside which are there and all the squares. Now we need the usual table and the triangles. Okay. Now we are looking at cos 60. So look at the angle where 60 is there and cos is nothing but adjacent upon hypotenuse. So adjacent is 1 and hypotenuse is 2. So it will become 1 upon 2. Same way sec 30. Now sec 30 will be, I will look at where angle 30 is. Sec is nothing but hypotenuse upon adjacent. So hypotenuse is 2 and adjacent is root 3. So this would become 2 upon root 3. Next is 10, 30. 10 is opposite upon adjacent. So 30 when I look from 30, opposite is 1. Adjacent is root 3, so it will become 1 upon root 3. Same way, sine 30. Sine is opposite upon hypotenuse. And opposite is 1. Hypotenuse is 2. So that would become 1 upon 2. Okay. Next is cos 30. Cos is adjacent upon hypotenuse. So adjacent is root 3. Hypotenuse is 2. Okay, so till I hope till here you are very clear with this. Next, what we are going to do is write the same brackets once again and we are going to square those values. So let's put a big upon sign, all the brackets, num signs and numbers which are outside. And then all we are going to do is just square whatever is inside the bracket. So 1 upon 2, the whole square will become 1 upon 4. 2 upon root 3, the whole square will become 4 upon 3. So whenever, think of it this way, whenever there is root sign, there is no, you know, that root and the square will get cancelled and you will write the number as it is. Sometimes students make a mistake over here also. They will square and write 2 square as 4 and root 3 as 9. So don't do that mistake. Keep that thing in mind. This will become 4 upon 3. Next, 1 upon root 3 will become, yeah, can you guess, 1 upon 3, correct. And next is 1 upon 2, so it will become 1 upon 4. And root 3 upon 2 will become 3 upon 4. Okay. Once we are done with this, all I will do is, whatever is outside the bracket, we will multiply. So I will just quickly, you know, we do it in that same step. So pay attention. So 5 multiplied by 1 will change this to 5 upon 4, okay. 4 multiplied by 4 will become 16 upon 3 and as it now once I have multiplied, I don't require all those brackets, right. So let's remove them and let's take the entire problem on the next page now. So, so I've written the same numbers back again. 
are my denominators in the first section of that entire numerator, are they same? No. So all I will do is write them separately in the rough column. So the numbers will be 4, 3, and 3. The idea is to change these numbers into 1, 1, 1. So I'll start with 2, and I can cancel off 2 to the 4. The rest of the numbers I can't divide with 2, right? So I'll just write it as it is. Next, think of another number that is 2 again. So I'll first change that 2 to 1, and 3 will remain as it is. Now I have to think of another prime number with, with which 3 can be cancelled off, and so 3. So 1 will remain as it is, and 3 1s are 3, 3 1s are 3. So now whatever numbers that I got in red outside, all I will do is multiply them, and that would become 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 times 2 becomes 12. So the number that I got now after multiplying is 12. Take that number and write it under one denominator. But this is the denominator of the numerator, you know, entire combination itself, right? So we'll do that properly. So here, and then 12 will be written after the first line. Now if you look at the second case uh, in the denominator, the denominators are same, right? So when the denominators are same, just write them one. So there are only two fractions, and both the places denominators are same. So I'll write it once. So this would become upon 4. Next, what we are going to do is write the fractions. So 5 upon 4, 16 upon 3, and 1 upon 3. And multiply. What will you multiply? Will you multiply 12 or will you multiply 4? We have taken the fractions of which we have calculated the value as 12, right? So you multiply 12 to it. Okay, then 4 and 12 can be cancelled. So 4 ones are 4, 4, 3s are 12. So this 3 and the 5 which is there multiplied will give me 15. Okay, in the second case, 3, 4s are 12. So 3, 4s are so 4 multiplied by 16 will give me 64. In the same way, in the next case, I can cancel off that 3. 4 is a 12, and 4 multiplied by 1 will give me 4. I hope this part is clear. Let us go to the in the denominator now. When I have already, you know, written the denominator directly, that because it is same, the numerators can be directly written. So 1 plus 3, and you are done with it. Okay, so keep that thing in mind. If at all my denominators in the second case also were different, then I would do the same step, write all the denominators separately in the rough column, take some number of your own, do all this calculation, take all the fractions, multiply with that number that I have got, that is the LCM, and then calculate. The procedure remains the same. Now, in this problem, my denominator was same. That was 4 in both the fractions, right? So I've written it directly, and whatever is in the numerator, I'll just write them down. So 1 plus 3 which would become, so calculating in that numerator, you get the answer to be 75 upon 12, and the second in the denominator itself, I'll get it 3 plus 1 is 4, and 4 upon 4. So that 4 upon 4 can be cancelled off, and once the denominator itself is not there, I will get something like this. I hope this part is clear, and the value will be 75 upon 12. Okay, so let us try solving another problem. Here, we are told that, you know, it is not evaluate, but prove. But what are we proving? Sine 30 plus sine 60 upon 1 upon sine 30 plus sine 60 is equal to what? It is equal to root 3 upon 3. Okay, so let us solve a problem where we are dealing with sine 30 plus sine 60 upon 1 plus sine 30 plus sine 60. Here, we are supposed to equate it to something because that's why it's, it has said prove, right? So prove is nothing but root 3 upon 3. So what we'll do is we'll take that left-hand side first 
and write it once again, and then start solving it. So again, first write the brackets for all the trigonometric functions that are there. So on in the in the this case, numerator has two brackets, so I've written that. And in the denominator, again, two functions, so two brackets. Write all the signs. The numbers that are multiplied with the function, are there any? No. But there is one which is added, right? So I'll write one over there. Now we'll require, and you already know all this, right? So I will not, you know, take much time to telling you how the values work because you already know how to calculate them. So sine 30 will become half, sine 60 will become root 3 upon 2, 1 will, written, will be written as it is, sine 30 is half and sine 60 is root 3 upon 2. So once you are done with this, there is nothing to multiply, so I can remove all the brackets. Okay, And here, my denominator in the first case are same, so I can write it directly once. So 2, and then I told you when the denominators are same, I can write the numerators directly. So this will be 1 plus root 3. Okay, in the next, in the denominator, now denominators are also same for two fractions, but the other one is just like that, right? So what I'm going to do is first write 2 in this case, and the answer will be 3, 3, hmm. how is, okay, see, that is because what I have done is look at only the first part, that is 1 plus, I'll tell you, okay, this. Now, if you look at it as, you know, I have one number which doesn't have anything in the denominator, so we'll consider it has 1, okay? And then we would ca calculate this as 1 plus 1 upon root 2. So when there's nothing, we write it upon 1. Okay, now I have two different denominators, so I will take them in the rough column, and it will be 1 upon 1 and 2. Take some number, divide it to make it 1 comma 1. So that's it, right? So 2. Once I do that, I will take both the fractions and multiply 2 to it. So 1 upon 1 multiplied by 2, 1 upon 2 multiplied by 2. So let's do that. And then I will get 2 multiplied by 1 is 2, and in the second case, 2 and 2 will get cancelled, what I will get is 1. So I will get it as 3 upon 2. That is how I have written 3 in this step. So, so in this place over here, you get it as 3 is only because of this step. Okay, now, simple thing to remember, if you don't want to do waste time and do all this calculation, then Remember this as Langde ka Sahara, okay? So what I mean by this is, you know, now you see that that one doesn't have a denominator, right? So all I will do is like, you know, give it like a helping hand. So from here, what I'm doing is, all I'm doing is taking this two, multiplying over here as a support. So I know this doesn't make sense, but it will help you to remember. So two, multiplied by 1 will be 2, and write the entire fraction as it is. So 2 multiplied by 1 will make it 2, plus 1 will be 3 upon 2. Okay, so that will be the answer over here. So uh, instead of doing all these steps, I can directly understand from here, it will become 3 upon 2. Okay, so just take the denominator, multiply over here, add it with this number and write whatever is there in the denominator. So I have indirectly calculated the LCM and everything is sorted over here. Okay, so based on that, I will get this as 3 upon 2. So imagine now 3 upon 2 plus root 3 upon 2, denominators are same, which I have written over here. So 3 plus root 3, that is how you get this answer. Okay, I hope this part is clear till here. And by the way, this is all what we have already learned in the past, okay? This is not your 10 standard, you know, calculation that you're learning. So now here, if you see that two, which is there 
in the numerator section, okay, over there in the denominator, and the two which are the, both the yellow color ones, they're same, right? So I can cancel them off, and if I do that, this entire fraction will become one plus root three upon three plus root three. So I'll write the entire thing back again over here. Now, but what were we asked to calculate? Something was given, right? Is equal to, you have to prove it. Is it this? No. Now, in this case, we have to rationalize. What is the meaning of rationalize? Simple. Whatever is there in the denominator, multiply back again in the numerator and denominator. So this would become three root three upon three root three. Now, all that will change is in the denominator, these two terms have a sign, right? So it is three plus root three. Now, when you are my multiplying again, when you're rationalizing it, all you are doing is changing the sign. So three plus root three multiplying will become three minus root three upon three minus root three. So the same things are written in the numerator and denominator because I can just cancel them off and I will get to that same fraction once again, right? If I would just do it, multiply it in one place, then there's a problem. That's the reason we write it in the numerator and denominator. You have also learned how to rationalize in your previous classes. So this would become, now how did I get nine minus three? If you look at the denominator, it is nothing but a plus b, a minus b, right? Which is a square minus b square. So three square will become nine and root three square will become three. So that's how I get nine minus three. In the numerator, the entire thing needs to be multiplied. So one multiplied by three will become three. One multiplied by root three, so I'll just do it over here. So one multiplied by three will become three. One multiplied by minus root three will become minus root three. Plus, okay, root three multiplied by three will become three root three and root three multiplied by root three will become minus three. Okay, now if you notice there is positive three and there is negative three. So they will automatically, they are same, so they will cancel off. And what I will get over here is minus root three plus three root three upon nine minus three. So this would become, so again, minus root three, which is there, I am, so it's like, you know, three chocolates minus one chocolate taken. So this would become, two chocolates, okay, upon nine minus three. So nine minus three will become six. And dividing this two and this six will give me root three upon three. So two ones are, two threes are, so root three upon three. And that is what we were asked to calculate. So I hope this part is clear. And if you have understood it completely, then you can try solving this problem. So what are we solving over here? What are we proving? Now both the side, the right hand side is also a kind of a trigonometric function with some values. This side also, it's the same thing. So all I will do is write it as left hand side, substitute values, get an answer, stop over there, write right hand side, write that, calculate the value, and both those values should come same. So once you're done with that, then the problem is done. So left hand side is equal to right hand side. And you can solve this as well. I know they look very complicated, but if you follow the same step, put the bracket, square, wherever it is there, signs, numbers which are outside, multiply them you know, after substituting, all these things very carefully, then trust me, you'll not make mistakes. Just, you know, a caution over there, it is multiplied, right? So just solve this entire part, okay? Okay, this entire part first, multiplied by this entire part. So all you have to do is calculate them separately and last, you know, just multiply them and you're done. So these problems should be done on my channel as I've already put these problems. So go ahead and check it out if you want to check the answers for these problems. And that's it for today's class. We'll continue in the next section. Thank you very much.